to The Wife Life, a show created by Allie, the Real Film Sapien. She is Thank here you. with us in our presence. Um, today, we are going to have a discussion with security boss Jasmine from Family Values and Allie, of course. And we are going to talk about the biggest threat to feminism, which is a virtuous woman, okay? <laughs> It's a virtuous woman. I gave you the answer. <laughs> um, this is a series that we're doing on both my channel and Allie's channel. So next week mm -hmm. we'll be on Allie's channel and there are going to be other wives on the panel. And then the next week after that will be on my channel. So keep watching. Um, we're going to have probably playlists on both of our channels, all of our channels, I think, with all of the videos. So find us there. But if you guys are joining in right now, give the video a big like, help support the algorithm. We really appreciate it. I'm going to read super chats first um, whenever they come in, and then we'll get to some of the comments and questions. If you guys have any questions, please drop it in the chat. I'm also going to um, open up the lines at the end for any women who want to call and talk to the ladies. We are here. We are available for you. But let's start the discussion before we jump into the good stuff, okay? Let's start by introducing ourselves. I'm going to start with you, security boss. Introduce yourself. Tell us about how long you've been married, about your family life, and where people can find you. All right. Thank you. I am security boss. You can find me at unsolicited, uh, security boss unsolicited. I will be married 27 years, November the 14th. I got married on a Wednesday at about five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> I love it. And I still like my husband, so <laughs> yes. definitely, you can definitely find me there. And uh, I appreciate y'all for having me. I appreciate being a part of Wife Life. And this is absolutely what everybody needs. And that's examples of women who want to be married, love being married, and are good examples of wives. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think I did. No, I think you answered the question. You answered it. <laughs> Ali, you want to go next? Oh, yes, yes. I am Allie. I have a YouTube channel at Real Fem Sapien. You can also find me on Instagram at Real Fem Sapien. Basically, I just try to help modern women out because I did not get any kind of wife playbook, woman playbook. Y'all, I got 11 tattoos. Like, it was not, not my intent, you know? So I am just trying to figure some things out along the way. I got married in February. But I just think that older women really do a disservice to younger women when it comes to mentorship. And I saw that there was a need and I made the platform and then I made the show. So there you go. Helping the ladies out. I love it. I love it. We're, we're really appreciative of this thought, this idea that you had and bringing us all together, the squad together <laughs> <laughs> to make it happen. I really appreciate it. Jasmine. Hello. Hello. My name is Jasmine. Um, you can follow me at youtube.com slash family values TV. We discuss all things family and marriage. I'm a married mom of seven and one on the way. So of eight. <laughs> and, you know, I just push the importance of the nuclear family and how, you know, how important it is that we keep our fathers in our homes and our and uh, our are the women stay in their place. No one likes to hear that. <laughs> so I, I speak the hard truths about being a wife and a mother. So um, definitely follow me. And thank you so much for having me on to Wife Life. I'm so excited to see the future of this show. I am so excited for this show. The last time we all got together, it was it was just all of us and there was so much i wish we could go for like five hours i feel like we could have gone for five hours if you know if we had the time but this is why this is such a great platform this is such a great opportunity to have these weekly discussions and talk about these hard truths that you know what it 
what it takes to be a wife, what it means to be a wife, uh, you know, how to operate in a family, all of these things, all of the discussions we're going to be having in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned to that. If you guys are jumping in right now, please give the video a big thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It helps out the algorithm. So we are going to jump into the first question, okay? And I did banners, guys, because I'm like tr figuring out this whole <laughs> stream yard thing. So the first question we're going to talk about is what is a virtuous woman? Because I feel like a lot of people don't know what that is. And what are the characteristics of a virtuous woman? What makes this woman? What does she? I'm not even going to give you any more hints. What? <laughs> What is a virtuous woman and what are her characteristics? Who wants to jump in first? I'll, I'll get started on okay. it. For me, a virtuous woman is a married woman and her role is to do whatever is necessary um, as a wife for her husband and for her family. And she doesn't mind doing it. Um, she al almost appears to be a business owner, but that falls into the whatever. Um Again, why well, I haven't said haven't said this today. I actually work for my husband. So whatever his needs are for our family to better our family, that's what a virtuous woman will do. But she's also very kind. She's also very gracious. She also helps people and don't mind doing it. She knows her role and is wit wise. Um, so I, I feel like this is something that happens over time. It's not like you come in the door being a virtuous woman. This is my opinion. I think it's something that you gain over the years, but you um, tend to want to be that woman to fill in the the blanks, I should say, and to complete that marriage um, union and have those children and make sure you operate and own your home, not own your home, but operate your home and pay bills, whatever is necessary. I think that virtuous woman is the one that does that. I 100% agree with that. I'm going to let y'all get into it <laughs> before I make my comments, but I definitely agree with that. Jasmine, yeah. you want to go? Yeah, I absolutely agree with everything you said, because sometimes we can get stuck on scripture and this, it has to be this way and this way. Mm -hmm. No, it's whatever it is that your particular family needs. And um, she does it with selflessness. I think a virtuous woman is selfish. It is not with herself in mind, but what her family and the needs of her husband and what it is that they need in order to thrive. Um, also a virtuous woman is a woman who's never idle. She, her hands are never idle. She's always doing something, creating something or fix or doing something around the house or it, if it's a side hustle, YouTube or um, <laughs> whatever it is that she has that extra time to do, she's not idle. I think, you know, idle hands could, you know, what is the saying? I, I don't, I don't remember the, what did, I oh. forgot. It's idle about. hands are the devil's playground. There you go. <laughs> yes. Idle, <laughs> minds. Comes idle minds are the devil. Idle yeah. minds are the idle devil's minds. playground. Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. sure what about the hands. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> it goes, with, it goes into the hands, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the mind feeds into the hands and then right. it's all downhill from there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so I think the okay. big thing is not being idle, being selfless and a, a wife. Of course, you got to be a wife to be that because you need a family to pour into. She pours into them selflessly. And I think I, I, I beat that over the head so much. Being selfless is very big on um, being a good wife in general. But if you want to be a virtuous woman, you have to be selfless. You have to think of others before you think of yourself. I agree. Gosh, you guys are nailing these. Sheesh. Okay, Allie. Man, we keep giving these men hope. They might leave MGTOW. They might finally decide to get married. I don't know. That's right. my goal. <laughs> and okay. yeah, of, of course, they're going to comment. They're going to be like, she's serving the feminine imperative. Look, man, I'm trying to get you a good woman, okay, who like wants to be of service and aid to you. Give me a break. Worst recommendations to have out there. But I would say when I think about a virtuous woman, I think about feminine altruism and being of service because we talk a lot about being 
selfless when it comes to being a feminine woman. And that's just being a helper in general. But it's not just to be of service to your man and your family, but it's also to be of service to your, your community. It's easy to talk about being of service when you're a wife, but there are plenty of single women out there that want to be wives. And to the women like that, I would say, if you have a heart of gold and you're putting in the work, you're a well-rounded woman and you're volunteering in your community, I think that speaks volumes because most women wouldn't be caught dead volunteering in an ER or at a homeless shelter or what have you. And I've always been doing, I've been doing that for a lot of my life. And I think that's one of the reasons why my husband decided to even take a chance on me in the first place is that I've been involved in my community, my community uh, programs. And that's a good way that a woman could set herself apart. You know, that's a virtuous woman. Take a time out of your day. You're not getting paid, but you just want to see the world be a better place. I think yeah. being a wife just takes it to the next level because you make the world a better place. Yes. But then you also make humans, you know, so you get to impact the world in that way, too. So I think you said this. I think what you're saying is that's the preparation for the wifehood mm -hmm. because yes. you have to be kind and selfless and considerate of others in order to do that within a marriage. If not, you will struggle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You will struggle. And I also wanted to add here too, um, we're talking about selflessness and, and serving not only your family, but the community and, and the people around you. But also I, I, what I uh, also think of a virtuous woman is her morality, because a lot of it has to do with morality, right? Her morality is not based and set into the world. She doesn't find her worth from the world, from Instagram, from the people that yeah, she's yeah. interacting with. Right. Her worth, her value comes from the Lord, God, your higher power, whatever you want to call it. But that is where I think um, set. I think that's one of the biggest things that sets a virtuous woman apart because any woman can be feminine, but a virtuous woman has her grounding in and her morality set in Christ set in a higher power. And I think that is something that um, I, I that's what something I wanted to add to the conversation, because I think it, it's often overlooked. Um, and a lot of these women today, and we're going to get into why I think the differences between feminism and uh, being a virtuous woman. But I think a lot today women are just so stuck in the world like mm. trying to find the validation from chad and brad and you know instagram and clout chasing and all of these different things and it's sad to me because when you're grounded in that when you are so bought into what the world says about you you're going to it's like a, a person on like building a house on sand, right? You're just going to keep moving and shifting with the ground. You're never going to be on solid ground. And I think that virtuous women know themselves because they know that they were created by God. You know what I mean? And so that's something that I, I just wanted to add to the conversation because I think it's so valuable and oftentimes overlooked because we talk about like femininity and how fem a feminine woman is also a virtuous woman, but that's a characteristic of it. Right. But, um, but yeah, that's what I wanted to add. So Rebecca, you're speaking of influence and influence is huge, mm -hmm. especially more so for women than men. Mm -hmm. Um, and often I do advise, I don't know if it's, if it's out of line to do so, but I advise women not to do the Instagrams, not to do the Facebooks and the social media, because we are so easily influenced and we don't know what's good, you know, because when you start mm -hmm. seeing everybody doing it, that looks like you or that that's your same age, that's in your same situation or what have you, then you take it on little by little and you never know when you just messed up. You just crossed over or you never know when that mindset or when those things have entered into your mind. Now, that's who you are. You, you do not know but you'll be responding differently and you'll be like, wow, I never even knew I did that. You could have a woman that is could have been so meek five years ago. Mm -hmm. Now she's aggressive. <laughs> when somebody says, no, you can't do that. What do you mean? I can't do that. What you mean? I need a man. I mean, it could just happen so easily and they won't even know where it came from. So influence is very important when it comes to um, being or becoming a virtuous woman or one that wants to be a, a wife. That's very important influence. Of course, not I'm older than all of you all. So back in my day, I didn't, we didn't, I didn't have all this. <laughs> so it's like 
and I never took interest in it, but I can imagine now that it can corrupt. It can corrupt you. Yeah. So sh go ahead. Go ahead, Jasmine. And to piggyback off of what you were saying, a lot of women don't like to accept that our nature is we are followers. We are mm -hmm. meant to, to follow, mm -hmm. to follow leaders. And due to that very nature, we fall for just about anything if we don't have a structure or someone to follow. That's why it's so important that we have our fathers in our home. And then from our fathers, we go to our husband's home so we can always have that covering and leadership. So we're not swaying by the winds of the world. Yeah. But you know what? Oh. That's a hard lesson learned. I don't even think, I think women think that they can control it, mm. you know, or they'll say, well, just, just, it's just a, a, our group here, you know, all of you all are so good. You couldn't dare influence me negatively mm -hmm. at all. So I think they take that with them and I'm like, okay, but you need to be careful. You need to pay attention, you know, I, it's, we have to pay attention, especially married women to single women. We have to pay attention. We have to. It, it happens. Like a, a lot of women would say it's controlling that um, my husband sometimes vets my friends, like to an extent where he's like, uh, I don't know about her. Maybe you should think about that. And then I may argue, well, she's nice. And she's this. And then I've learned the hard way. If I would have just listened to him the first time, I wouldn't have got stabbed in the back. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to just listen because they have wisdom and they can see things sometimes that we don't we don't see because we're so empathetic and we just want to be nice to everybody and we just want to love everybody and we we don't see the true intentions of everyone. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our husbands are great um, thermometers for our friends as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree. Allie, you want to say something? Yes. I wanted to talk about the impact of virtuous women in my life because it's crazy. Security boss is right when she talks about the power of that influence. So that's actually how I got to meet Christ again. I got baptized the first time when I was 13 to make my mother happy, but I went to undergrad and I am telling you, it's, it's different out here in the Midwest. Y'all, you wouldn't believe the Christians out here. Okay. So I met these really two bubbly, happy, joyful women. And I thought it was so suspicious, but I knew they were good people and I wanted to be their friend. But I was like, y'all really this happy because of Jesus? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. But the more I would talk to them and hang out with them and just see what light they were in the world, I was like, y'all, you know, I think God is sending me a sign. Go ahead, dunk me in the water. I am ready. I want to try something new out and make it my own personal relationship with Christ. And you'll hear a lot of complaints well, you guys might not, but over on my YouTube channel, I've heard a couple of comments where they talk about the fact that there's only Christian women on the panel. That was not on purpose. Mm. There are not a ton of virtuous secular wives out there, much less on YouTube, because as Christians, as Christian women, we are commanded to go ahead and educate younger women. So we have that drive within us in the first place. And there's not a ton of secular feminine wives, but I just wanted to explain that little part of the panel because it wasn't my intention but when i found virtuous kind women who weren't miserable wives they just all they all happen to be christian women and so yeah i think security boss is right and that's why i continue to surround myself with other like-minded christian women who like to be of service to their community because two out of the three very christian women that have inspired me they're single, but they're out there and they're volunteering and they're getting their education and they are as feminine as can be. I am a little bit jealous. And then I've got one of my girlfriends. So she's got three kids, like three, three under four. She's been married 10 years. And she also continues to serve the community on a political level, on a school board level. So if you surround yourself, if you're thinking, well, why can't I get a husband? Look at your girlfriends. Are any of them wife material? When you are with them, do they spark joy? We're going to go and talk about <laughs> sparking joy. Was it uh, Marie Kondo? What's her name? Yeah, Marie Kondo. Yeah. If you look at your girlfriend and she does not spark joy, she needs to be out of your life. Okay. Do it for you. Do it for you. Because if I hadn't met those women, I don't think, I don't know if I would be married for one, for two. I don't even know if I would be a good wife because Christ is, Christ is who helps me most to be a better wife, even though I am married to a non-believer it still gives me that peace and that grounding and my worth Re Rebecca was talking about because that was what was so dang happy about those two bubbly Christian women in college was that they had no question of their value. They were like, I am defined as a daughter of the most high. Why would I, 
why would I look down on myself? And I was like, oh, sign me up. So there you go. Virtuous women. And go they had no care of this world either. Mm -hmm. That was the most important thing is they had no care of this world. So why not? If you don't have a care about what's going on in this crazy world, there's nothing else left to be but to be happy. Because you like, especially if you're taken care of and you you don't have to worry about the junk that goes on here. And oh, come on. Yeah, no, that's why they were bubbly, along with those little uh, those little midday sips. But, you know, <laughs> you know, y'all know them, you know, y'all know <laughs> those midday champagne sips. But other than that, if you have no care, but guess what? It doesn't, isn't that what makes it the um, biggest threat to feminism? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what it really is? Because it would be really hard to tell a feminist that she's not virtuous. Because they do all of this. It will be very, very hard. They would not understand what you're talking about. They'll be like, I do that. I do that. <laughs> then what? So but what would be the difference? It, the difference is their intentions. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing these things? Is exactly. it for the accolades or is it for to actually, you know, to actually help people? Mm hmm. Selflessness. And they also might be lacking a little kindness, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but I would say when anyone does any sort of virtuous act, it's are they doing it simply to do it because it gives them fulfillment and they want to be helpful or are they doing it for recognition? You can see that too. So I, I, I get a couple of clients every now and then and they're like, well, I'm doing nice things for my husband. And then I tell him about them. And then he gets a little bit annoyed. I'm like, honey, that's because you're doing you it for his recognition. <laughs> you know? What is happening? But also, <laughs> but also, I wanted to touch on something you said, security boss. Um, you know, when you are almost countercultural, right? Because, like, if you think about it, we are countercultural to what society says is the norm. Like, and I'm totally okay with it mm -hmm. because I found peace in that as well. And I think that that to uh, in how I look at all of this is that once you once you get away from the world and what the world says is cool and what the world says is what to do and you know to be a slut and to you know have as many partners as you possibly can and climb the corporate ladder and all of this <laughs> stuff right once like first of all been there like been there, climbed the corporate ladder, did all of that stuff, like got all the money, got my bag and still was depressed. So can someone explain to me how that works? And, and also too, once you're not focused on that anymore and your, sh and your brain shifts and your mind shifts from, okay, this is how the world sees success. This is how the world sees family. This is how the world... I'm going to do everything the opposite. If the world says this, I'm going to just do the opposite. And that too brings peace, internal peace, because I know from the bottom of my heart that I'm here like trying to help women and I'm doing it in a way that's like, like we're all here, you know, trying to inspire women and whatnot. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to listen to what we have to say, that's okay. That's okay. We put a little nugget in your ear. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. So you plant the seed and someone else has to come behind and water it. So yeah. And weed it, it and yep. weed. <laughs> so let, let me add something to that. And then I'm gonna let you move on. Cause I know okay. you probably want to move on, but what you just said about being different, I had no idea until about a month ago. I told my husband, I said, I had no idea that I spoke in extremes because <laughs> No, I'm serious because it's my life. So it's not extreme for me. But mm -hmm. I didn't realize what you just said is so very true because it's just our life and this is what we do. So when I say, and it's two things I say all the time and family values probably knows what these are. One thing is I say, I put me and my husband put all that money in one pot. I say that and some women's heads almost turn around on, the, on their neck, completely around. You do what? I'm like, yeah, what? You know, I'm like, okay. I, you know, what's wrong with that? And then the second thing is I don't hang out with single girlfriends. I don't do single friends. And that was another family values that I was on this path for. But anyway. <laughs> they don't like that. What you doing about the problem with us for? Yeah. No, it gets worse. It was like, I think that's a problem with you. You can't make friends. I'm like, You're okay. <laughs> okay. 
But I didn't know that was extreme. I thought that that was just something that you do, you know, when you're married, becoming one with your husband. I just thought that that's your attention just kind of shifts to that versus the other thing. So it was more like a natural progression for me and not so much of a, an extreme. Right. But mm -hmm. you're, you're Rebecca, you were definitely on it when you started what you said. It's it's rear the it's absolutely counter. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't know it's counter because you're living your life and, and it's, it's 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 really weird. I'm telling you, I didn't realize this about a month ago. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, Security so boss, come on. A month ago. I just kidding. Well, that, that sound, you, you, she's not on social media. You're not on social media. Oh, yeah, that is I, true. I've never no, i mm -mm. but still, even with that though, there's not it's, it's not filled. Social media isn't filled with married women mm -hmm. that have these conversations. We're gonna so when somebody's much. asking a question, I'm just answering the question the way I <laughs> do things, and I'm not thinking further. And then then I'd be like, oh, oh. Oh, that was extreme. So I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I, we were on a panel and I realized that, oh, that was an extreme thing that I said, not thinking that it really was, but I get it. It's Man. only extreme what? now. It's only <laughs> like, let's, let's be real. 10 years ago, a decade ago, not even that long ago. Th these are pretty normal things. Okay. Yeah. Making your sure. Can I? <laughs> Can I, can I chime in real quick for a pro tip? Because we got a lot of gentlemen that are watching and they're always like, where can I find a good woman? Look, I'm about to give you this foolproof plan, period, period, poo, period. Okay, so if you want to find a virtuous woman, go to a local community shelter. I am not kidding. The homeless shelter, the <laughs> addict shelter, the, the mental health shelter, the young women. Do this in a university town, though. It's got to be a college town because that's going to give you the best bets. Go there, volunteer there. You're going to find a kind young lady. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. There you go. I that thought you were going to say, volunteer go pick up one of those. <laughs> volunteer at the school. You'll, you'll find a nice young lady at the school volunteering. Mm -hmm. uh, the Starbucks early in the morning, reading a book, the Barnes and Noble. You, There's places. Yeah. I just, I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. Okay, let me get to these super chats because I have, I think I have two. Um, shout out to Mr. Bobby for the $4. He goes, I'm broke and dusty, but here's a dollar for each of <laughs> I love him. And I know he left. I that you'll see it on the replay. You'll see it on the replay. We were just we were in it. We were in it. And thank you so much, Charday, for the 999. Love seeing these feminine, lovely wives. Y'all are so beautiful and amazing. Thank you so much for the super chats. And go ahead, Allie. What? You know what I was gonna say? It's funny you say that, Rebecca. It's funny that you say that we're beautiful because I'm not going to lie. Part of the reason why I wanted to become Christian was a little bit superficial because I couldn't <laughs> notice. I couldn't help but notice that a lot of these Christian women were very beautiful. The two girlfriends I'm talking about, very beautiful. If you look around, because I mean, the Bible does tell us to value beauty. You know what I mean? And that's why it's, we're warned not to covet it. But I'm telling you, there is a trend where you look at Christian women that actually live by the word. And they just so happen to have a nice skin complexion and their hair is nice and they're not obese. I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, if we're going to talk about feminism, okay, here we go. Let's just bring it up here, okay? Because I had other things. How does being virtuous differ from being a modern, a modern feminist? Okay, let's get into it because I have one thing. The These feminists, because y'all, if you looked, if you had a side-by-side, -side, first of all, Allie, what you doing? Like the video. $50. Yay. Thank you. She's a boss. Okay. She got that YouTube money now. So she can send, <laughs> so she can send $50 super chats. Y'all, this is what we're working with. $50. $50 is $50. Okay. So one thing, one of the main differences, you you just spoke on this, Allie. The differences that I've perceived, okay, and I'm I'm the token example. When I was a feminist, y'all, I had short hair, I looked like a dude, and I had green hair, purple hair, blue hair, name the color, and I had that hair. Okay, I wish I I could pull, pull up a photo of me 
while y'all are talking, I'm going to find a photo of me and I'm going to put it out here for y'all to see the differences between me in my feminism and me now. Mm. It is so stark, the difference. It's wild. And I think that feminism really just wants women to be ugly, like ugly on the inside, rotten on the inside, rotten on the outside. I'll say, I'm so sorry. It's true. Like, they're mm. asking women to deform their bodies. It's insanity out here. And I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to let you guys tell me what differences that you observe. But before we jump into that, I'm going to read the super chat. Thank you so much, OCGM, for the $5. Shout out to the real American women in this channel. Do not stop your channel. More women need to bleh, more women need to talk to more women. I agree. Men who want families are out here. Mm -hmm. They are. Okay. And we're trying to bring the women. We're trying to make them wives up here for y'all. Okay. So how does it differ? Who wants to go first? I feel like Jasmine is ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to um, bring up the fact that you, we noticed that virtuous, submissive, and Christian women um, usually look very well. It's because they're not fighting their own nature. They're accepting their nature. They're resting in that. They're, you know, they're not carrying weight that they weren't meant to carry. They, the men can handle that. We're going to sit here and look pretty and do what is easy for us because that's what God made us for. So when you accept that and when you walk in that, you, your youth is, is preserved. And then you're happy when you're happy on the inside, you you look it on the outside and then you want to take better uh, care of yourself on top of that. So I think it all aligns as for feminists. They're literally going against their nature. They're fighting their own nature, saying that it's weak to be submissive or to be virtuous or to or to uh, let a man lead. And they're carrying weight. They're doing things that they, sh they, they shouldn't be doing and is beating down their bodies, stressing them out. They wonder why they're so angry. And, and when they're angry and nasty on the inside, you're going to look it on the outside. And that's just simply how it is. Hmm. I agree with that. But I wanted to add that um, we love men. <laughs> we like men and feminists appear to hate men but want them around occasionally. Y'all know what I mean. Um, so that's a big difference. That's a big difference. They want them, but only for a time and then they can go. They'll call them when something broke, but only for a time, but they can't find the value in the man in conversation or in their mindset, but they still want them around for a time. And that's a big difference. We as women, virtuous women, married women, wives, we understand the man's role. We understand the covering. Um, we understand the value of them. And we don't want to ever change. We don't want to ever change. No, that doesn't mean our men are perfect. Don't mean that they don't make mistakes. But it means that their heart and their will is in the right place. And they know their roles also. Y'all are preaching right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't. So good. It is. It's. It's so true. Like, I don't even know. Allie, do you have anything to add? Oh yeah, the whole going against nature thing. I think the worst I ever looked in my life was being in the military. And are there feminine women in the military? Yeah, no. mm. I don't think so. I don't mm. think so. They might look feminine, but they're still single. So something's still off. Something is still off. So for me, I was going against my nature, working this really hard job to the point where I developed a nervous tick where I was blanking all the time. So it is actually pretty bad. And I gained 45 pounds, you know, and it's like when you learn to let things go to embrace your femininity, because femininity, a lot of it is about just receiving and people are more apt to help you and give you things if you're just a kind and decent human being. So once I was able to breathe and relax, it's like the weight melted off. I was going to the gym more and it does change your cortisol levels too. There's this thing called hurried woman syndrome. You can tell when women are going against their feminine nature, just like Jasmine is saying, you don't even have time to take care of yourselves. I used to have clients 
Sometimes they would talk about, you know, the problems that they're having and polarity in their marriage. Talk about they haven't showered in days. I'm like, honey, baby girl, come on. If that's not a sign of trouble times, that's a sign. Like you got to fix something, fix your life. Mm -hmm. um, hold on. My dog's going off. So I'll, I'll leave. Bye. You notice how he barked at the perfect time. <laughs> I got to fix something. <laughs> No, but it's that's how they sound. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And can we just normalize good marriages? Like this is something that really bothers me when I look at social media and just media in general. Even even YouTube, like everything, YouTube, Instagram, you see this you see this depiction of a husband and wife and they're supposed to hate each other at like, you know, 40, 30 years in, 20 years in, into a marriage and that they are just living like roommates. You know, it's what society pushes. Mm -hmm. And this is why I say like feminist, feminists get married. Like y'all, if, mm -hmm. if you don't know this, like, hello, they get married and and a lot of it is them leading their families. I heard Adele the other day, I think she was on some uh, some radio or something, and she said she wanted to be the matriarch of her family. She wanted to run her family. She didn't need, she wanted her boyfriend's, you know, little swimmers, but she wanted to run her family. And I, I'm thinking, well, that's not resting in your femininity. That's not being, you know, yes, you, as a mom, like I take care of the things of the house. As a wife, I take care of the things of the house, but my husband runs this house. Like, don't get it twisted. Okay. I can operate it. I'm the COO. My husband's the CEO. I'm the COO. I'm the operations manager. Okay. I run the operations around here, but, but like, don't get it twisted. My husband runs the show. Okay. Just like you, security boss, you said, mm -hmm. I work for my husband. Like, mm -hmm. don't get it twisted, you know? And I think for a lot of women, even in marriages, they're operating as the CEO of their marriage. And it's, and you see these women so stressed out, like pulling out their hair, mm -hmm. doing all this stuff. And you know, you see these breakdowns on social media. Like I, I did a YouTube video about this woman who said that her husband didn't put the laundry, change the laundry from like the, the washer to the dryer and how she wanted a divorce. Like this is, this is what's happening on social media. Okay. Oh, that made me so angry as a military spouse, because I mean, it, it's, it's a different vibe being a military spouse. My husband works hard and even though he's still at his rank they can still crap on him if they want to like you are owned by uncle sam and if your boss it doesn't like you then you're going to be dealing with consequences at any rank she's talking about this man doesn't come home to take out the trash he's probably tired because no joke even if so your standard work day is 10 hours long it starts at 6 a.m sometimes it ends at 5 p.m but they can keep you longer okay and so you want a man working 60 hours a week you want him to take out the trash? That doesn't seem right. Not to me. You don't know how many times I've taken out the trash because Mr. Boss stays up producing right? these videos, finding these sound effects, pushing them buttons. He does all that. All I do is sit here. If y'all didn't know that, does everybody know that? <laughs> I do nothing but sit here and talk. Wait, get these camera angles. I We, we need to see the camera that. angles. <laughs> Guess what? He's the, he'll stay up all night and do this. So if I need to take the trash to the trash can. I don't mind doing it if on my way out because this is what he does. He loves this stuff. If this was up to me, y'all might get half of me, <laughs> none of me, or y'all wouldn't even be able to hear me. I can't believe somebody broke up over the trash. That's, that's oh, yes. The, oh, no, this happened, apparently. They split up, apparently. But but you know what? Like I, I tell people, I tell women to, look, I watch YouTube videos to change the lights. Okay, if my husband is not home, if my husband is not home and he's working, my husband works from eight to sometimes he gets home at nine. If I don't know how to change the light fixture or like, I don't know, unplug the this, that and the third, I don't know, whatever is going on in the house, I look it up. I figure it out. I know how to barbecue. I know how to change light fixture. I know how to do all this stuff because, you know, 
Like I'm the operator of this home and I want to make sure that my husband's not coming home and say, Hey honey, you got to do this, this, that, like, here's your laundry list of all the things that you have to do because I couldn't fix it myself. You know what I mean? And like, you've talked about this, Jasmine, like, you know, you got to, I operate this home, like, let's go. You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, that's the virtuous woman. And you just said, you know what? This guy has to be done now because I'm not going to stand in here or sit in here in the dark. So I'm going <laughs> to put this light bulb in and fix it. And then if it's not right, then he can fix it when he comes back home. You know, who? I don't know who does. Okay. Exactly. And and if, if you really think about the, because y'all said that these feminist women get married too, right? Mm-hmm. Look at their husbands. Are these I mean, I wasn't saying men? anything, but <laughs> are these the type of men that you want to be led by? I know I wouldn't. Someone who doesn't know how to problem solve, who when I, he comes home and I say I couldn't get the light to work and he's like, well, shoot, what are we going to do? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, so, I need a problem solver. <laughs> do you think they go in knowing this or is this something that happens gradually? I think they know it and they choose those men on purpose because they know that they can control him. They don't have to be led. Well, that's the, that's the key. I think they, they, they like, they like the control at the beginning, right? Until it gets old and then they get old and then they get resentful of their husbands for not doing the thing that they want them to do. And that's that's what we're seeing. You know, we see these women that are like fed up, like the laundry woman, right? She probably controls that. She probably controls that man. Mm. I'm sorry. She probably controls that man. And the tone that she uses in that, in the video, you, you need to watch the video. The tone that she uses, you could tell that she already resents her husband that she checked out a long time ago. And a mm. lot of people are doing that. Like they're just checking out and, and Carla talks about this, the roommates, right? They just become roommates living in the same house and that's it. And, mm-hmm. and that's what they do. Allie, I know you have something you want to say. Oh yeah. That. Oh yeah. Well, finally, I can finally throw shade on my in-laws. So let me stop. No, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. So as a little girl, you know, in general, we really dream of being a lawyer and a doctor and, you think that it's going to give you these really great things as a woman and you're going to get this really great grind. So I ended up going to Christmas and I ended up seeing my in-laws, right? And these are all very professional, well-established women. When I tell you every single husband was being bossed and ordered around to do this, to do that in the third, to run the holiday. And it just didn't seem like cute or romantic. It didn't seem funny either because I, I am a newcomer. I am just meeting this family and I am absolutely watching these men be disrespected and admonished. So I would, I would like to urge young women, if you think you want this high status, high professional thing, watch those couples during the holidays, watch them during big events, because it's very, they're very quick. Do this, do that. Can you check on this, this, that, and the third? And she's like sitting back and enjoying herself. So be observant, watch what women do not what they say, because they're going to tell you one story, but look at their actions and it's going to help you to discern. You know what? Actually, maybe, maybe I don't care that much about being an alpha woman. Maybe that's not the move for me. My, my degree is right here. Collecting some dust. Rebecca, where's your degree? I I think it's in a box somewhere. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I actually found it. I think I just shoved it right back in that box. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. I I definitely can relate to what you're talking about. It almost makes you cringe. And then when you're in these situations and then you are serving your man and you are the complete opposite of these women, that's when they feel threatened. That's when you get the eyeballs. That's when you get them talking about you behind your back. That's when they sit you down and like, do you have anything else going on with your life other than a wife? You yes, know, yeah. I've, I've had questions like that. Like, what about you? What are you doing for you? I'm like, taking care of my family. That is for me. And they it, it, it bothers them because they know that their husbands see that. And they're like, oh, my husband's going to get ideas now. We mm-hmm. don't want to get any ideas. That's why I, I love the... Um, the topic of the, of today is how are we a threat or we are a threat 
it's a, a lot of times I've experienced going on these family trips and stuff like that. And I know I'm being talked about, you know, we, we're women. We know, we know. And it's like, well, dang, what did I do wrong? All I did was make my husband a plate. Hmm. That's like a crime. That's a crime. You're going to jail. You're going, going to, to feminist jail. Cut jail. Your legs off. You're pregnant. Sit down. No. I'm going to feel you. Yeah. <laughs> so listen, um, Miss T. Shaw has a question for, for us. Ooh, but it's I'm... going along the lines what um, Family Values is saying right now. She says, my question to married couples is when people see you see that you're married or hear you talk about your marriage, does it draw others to wanting marriage or push others away from it? And that just goes to what you were just Ooh. saying. What do you think? I, I think it's 50-50. I think it, mm -hmm. make, it makes women feel like, well, that's not the type of marriage that I want. And then for the men, they're like, I want a marriage like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, I'm, the, opposites, the opposites attract, you're saying. Right, right. Oh, it's, wow. it's, it's feminism. It's, it's majority of women, modern women these days don't want to be traditional. They don't want to be that type of woman. This brings up a, um, a story. I'm not going to say any names, but someone very close to my family um, in our family was talking to my husband's friend about me and said and was saying things and he ended up coming to tell us about it. He he said that she said that I'm just like a a sick little puppy following my husband around and back and doing everything that he wants and just do, she doesn't have a mind of her own type thing. She just went went in on me, right? And then you know what the guy said? He said I wish I could find me a woman like that. Yeah. And it's like women, they, they think it's such a cringe thing. And it's like, ma'am, this is what men want. This is why you're single. <sighs> I don't think that's genuine. I think that they do want it. They just haven't matured enough to know they're selfish still because they don't know they're going to get a return on that behavior. So that makes mm -hmm. them, they're still in that mode of I'll do for you if you do for me. Mm -hmm. And you're do you're giving selfish li list. I mean, you you just doing it. You're not selfish in any way. You're preparing his plate. You're bringing it to him. Whatever you want, dear, pregnant, pregnant or not. You're not like it's all about me. It's all about me. And they're still in that mode. It's all about me. So it's like they can't see what you're doing being anyway something they want because they don't see you winning or getting anything out of it. Even though you're smiling, even though you're happy, it's just like. They want it, but it's just no guarantee that, you know, so I would say it, women do want this. So I would say it, it makes them question it. Now, if you were the type of woman that would be like, you need to go in there and fix your own plate, then it would be confirmation for them. They would be like, okay, I don't want to be married, but you're, you're sparking another part of them. And I really think I'll, and I ain't going to say all, I think the majority of the women want to actually be married. I definitely, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think it sparks a little bit of jealousy because you mm -hmm. see something so good again, mm -hmm. you know, that virtuous nature about you, Jasmine, it sparks that like, well, why isn't this working for me? Or why can't I get this thing that she has? But it's a change of spirit that women have to go through. It's not, oh, if you do X, Y, Z, you're going to get that. No, you have to completely change your mindset. You have to completely change your heart and where you're coming from in order to be a virtuous woman, in order to be a woman just like you that can serve and say, I'm not serving because I'm having that that list like, oh, check, mm -hmm. checked off, right? I got my husband's lunch today, uh, checked off. I did his laundry, check. No, because you're not holding accounts. People want to like, I, what I see today, and this goes for both men and women, is people just want to hold accounts, right? They're like, oh, grab the filing cabinet. Where's the filing cabinet? Let's bring it out. Uh, today, I did this, this, and this. Why didn't you reciprocate? And that's a and that's a problem in, in marriage. If you're holding accounts in marriage, you're going to have a lot of problems, <laughs> A lot of problems because there are months and weeks where I'm like, I feel I'm like, yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Like I'm going and you might not feel appreciated, but that's not 
like these, it comes in waves, y'all. Like mm-hmm. marriage is not this steady or what is it like this trajectory upwards. It goes, it's like this, you know, and it's going to be like that for the rest of your life. So you better buckle in, sis. <laughs> I better buckle. Right. Wait, I, wait, you, know, wait, I, I, you said that um, the virtuous woman does things not for praise because they have to be done. Yep. So that's the same thing. You're taking care of your husband and everybody else around you because it needs to be done. So, but I got, can I ask a question? Cause I remember somebody said something about the women get, have resentment yes. when the husband, well, you know, but you said they, they know going in that the husband is this way, but then they tend to resent him later. How is that mm. possible? That doesn't. Okay. Oh, bef- Okay, wait, hold on. Let Ali answer this. Let me okay. get to these two super chats because oh, they've been like all up in here. And I was like, I, I need to get through these. I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I know we're just having these conversations and we're in it. OCGM, thank you for the $5. Look at these beauty. Okay, I cannot talk. Look at the beauty of these feminine women. You guys literally can shoot a whole human from a from your body. <laughs> Y'all have free food and shoots. Okay, I'm yes we do do that we, <laughs> we have we did, that. yes we have done that and then hold on we have one more thank you michael blasco for the 499 hi ladies i work in an office with two men and two women who are extremely liberal feminists sometimes i feel picked on because i'm not how do you deal with it let's get back to that question because this is a really good question um for people in the workplace. So I'm going to pin that. I think I did that. Y'all, I'm trying to figure out this whole this whole stream yard thing, all right? Now, uh security boss, you said these women know you said you I said the women know and control it but then they resent it later on. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I said. I I know this <laughs> I know this because I've seen it happen, right? Mm -hmm. Because they think that, oh, this is fun for now. Like this controlling nature Mm -hmm. that I have is fun now. I got you. Right? Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. then it gets boring. It gets old, just like everything else, right? And then they get to a point where they're like, like literally he's just repulsive. Mm -hmm. I've seen... I've seen too many couples go through that in my in my experience. Allie, you really want to touch on this topic. Oh, oh yeah, because I, I read about it in this book, The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. It's like a woman will date a panda and then be mad when he's still a panda after marriage, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> like you you regret the animal that you bring home. And I that's not to uh, minimize men or anything like that. It's just knowing someone's nature. And so women will get into these relationships and I'll think it's cute, these little quirks, these little, these little tweaks in the personality. They won't really like that stuff, but they think, oh, you know, like that's fine. That's fine. It's not going to be, it's not gonna be a problem. Then they get married and they expect this man to transform but he's going to be the same man that you dated. He's not going to change. It's not like he's going to hit a switch and there's going to be this epiphany and he's going to stop playing basketball with his friends and he's just going to want to hang out with you all the time and quit his hobbies. No, it's going to be the same dude. But what we'll do is we'll ignore the things that we don't like or the red flags when we're dating, try to force Mm -hmm. a relationship, and bam, we caught resentments. Ask me yeah. how I know. Let me say, let me say, let me say. <laughs> and, and then on top of that, on top of the resentment, if that man does say, okay, I need to be a better leader. I need to put my foot down. She's calling him a narcissist controlling bigot. Yeah. So they want it, but they don't want what comes with it. So like it, it comes back to they're fighting their own nature. A mm. hundred A hundred percent. And I think I hopefully that that answers it. But you both nailed it, Allie and Jasmine, like Mm -hmm. nailed it. Um, We have three super chats and thank you so much for donating to the platform. OCGM with another donation, y'all. 
you're coming through, okay? $10. What's amazing is men are simple enough to tell women exactly how to get them to slay the dragon and build the castle and pay all the bills, but many just won't be feminine like the dragon slayer wants. I get what you did there. <laughs> It's true. I mean, like, listen, men will tell women exactly, exactly to the T what they want. And women are like, no, 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 that's not what men want. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's not what you want. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's not what you want. Yeah. I'm like, sis, shut up. Just z z the mouth. Okay. We got B Ross with a $20 donation to the platform. Thank you so much. Great conversation, ladies. My niece had her first birthday this year. Congratulations. And I'm always thinking about how I want the best for her. I'm not her parent, but I still appreciate the gem drops. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Z uh, the tried and true. How, how do you say Zent Zentians? Zent Allie, you, you, yeah, Zentience. Yes. Zentience. Thank you so much for the hundred dollars. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Virtue is literally defined as chastity, especially in women, as per Miriam Webster's dictionary, which is in direct contradiction to the boss babe hot girl summer that Nas uh feminism espouses. Submit to your chosen man and see how he will move mountains for you. Yes, yes. I mean, come on. And we got a $5 donation from Black Man Unfiltered Network. Thank you so much. You guys give men hope. Shout out to SB, all the ladies who are the standard on this beautiful panel. Feminist busters are here. I like that. <laughs> Feminist busters. Okay. So we had um, the starred. So how do you deal? And I know this doesn't have to this doesn't go into like w wifehood or whatever, but it might, I don't know. I don't work in a corporate office anymore, but how do you deal with it? Like, how do you deal with people just picking on you in these, just in these situations? Right. Cause we know, like you said, Jasmine, people talk behind your back. People talk about behind my back. I've had, I've lost many friends from just, opening my mouth and speaking here on YouTube and mm. sharing this message, right? It's like you said, it's very, it's very countercultural. It's very controversial for some reason to live this life, to be this way. So how do you deal with the hate or do you just dismiss it? I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, I got new friends. I literally couldn't take it anymore. I'm not, I'm not playing. Like I went to undergrad. I pretty much in my opinion, I got bullied because I wasn't, you know, on the progressive or the liberal side of things. And it's hard to be progressive and a liberal and then want to come home and be a feminine wife because it's, there's that dichotomy to be progressive is to be feminist. And that just wasn't for me. So I got involved in a community project I had a man connect me to another woman in town. She was out here sending mass emails about the school board because she's passionate. And I went out of my way and I said, hey, you know, I am feeling really isolated in college right now. And I could use a like minded friend. You know, could I meet up with you? She said yes. And we've been friends for almost a year now. So I would just urge you to replace your friends. Honestly, put yourself out there. And there's a difference between being in an echo chamber and a community. An echo chamber is just hearing the same thoughts without depth. But building a community, you need to agree on certain principles so that you can get to deeper conversations. If I have to, to even be your girlfriend as a woman, right? If I have to argue at the baseline that men are not inherently oppressive, <laughs> that it is okay to serve your husband, then we're not going to get very far. I'm not going to get tips and tricks on how to be a wife. So I need to have that in order to move forward. So uh, look around at your office because you'd be surprised if my, I'm imagining that you might be on the conservative side of things. There's a lot of silent conservatives that just don't want to lose their jobs. You know, so maybe have a couple of those, you know, the, the low, low bar conversations, right? Nothing too risky. Okay. You don't have to be coming out talking about the, the jab has chips in it or nothing like that. Like be cool, be cool. <laughs> Just uh, talk to people that you don't normally talk to and you'll probably find another conservative. 
So for me in, in the YouTube spaces, um, a wise man once told me that um, they don't see what you see. Um, they don't mm -hmm. see it yet. So grace everyone and just mm -hmm. be an example. Um, far as the corporate environments, I would say, keep your mouth closed <laughs> and grace everyone also. But definitely in these spaces, just try to be an example and, and, and just see what happens because you they don't see what you see. It's, yeah. it's obvious they don't see it that way. The, the eyes that have not yet been open to the experiences that you have. So there's no way they can clearly understand it. But if you continue to walk it out, then they'll continue to question. Mm -hmm. If it continues to be the same answer, then they'll continue to question more. And then hopefully, eventually, it'll make sense. Yeah. And, and on top of that, you know, separate yourself, of course, but don't be a uh, open pinata. Don't let them just beat on you. Stand up for yourself when you have to stand up for yourself. But you don't have to deal with these people unless it is on a, you know, um, a, a work level. So don't let them into your life. Don't give them any information about yourself that you you don't need to. All work. Keep it very simple, two dimensional. Don't let them in. You know, you can't trust them. Just be careful because women like these, they tend to have envy as well. And they, and, and they, and, and it can become dangerous. They can end up lying on you and you losing your job and silly stuff like that. So don't open yourself up to these women. And like Ali said, find others, <laughs> with other women, or maybe don't even be friends with people at work. Yeah, <laughs> don't be friends with people at work because it's just it's too much. It could get really messy. So but I'm really sorry that you're going through this. Um, our culture really needs a, a flip and quick. Yeah, and I think um, I want to I want to touch on SB's uh, point. You know, if we walk the walk and if you are the example, people are going to be like, what? why is this person always happy? Why is this person always joyful, even in these tough times, right? Like, sometimes you have to be that example. And you have to be Oh, my gosh, I'm gonna be you have to be the change that you want to see. But you have to, especially in in those situations, though, you you really have to um, you have to exemplify if you're a woman, you have to exemplify being a virtuous woman. If you're a man, like you have to exemplify these things, right? And and those things don't go overlooked. Trust me, people are, if people are talking about it, you're doing the right thing, okay? If people are talking mm -hmm. about you, you're on the target. Because let me tell you, like, I don't, I honestly, people can talk all they want about me, but they have, if they want to say something bad, I know people are out there be like, oh, she's this, that, and the third. Okay, that's your opinion. That's something that you have to work on in yourself. That's some, that's some like inner workings that are because the way that I'm living is stirring something up in your spirit, which is okay. That's what we want to see. We want to mm -hmm. see that. Um, thank you so much, Andre Harrison family values. Oh, change the name. Okay. $10 Titus 235 in real life with these ladies on these on this panel. Thank you so much for the donation. And thank you so much, Callie Lavello, for the 999 first female panel I've seen that isn't toxic. Shout out. And telling it how it is. Much love from the West Coast. All right, guys. We are already an hour into this stream. I don't know if we're going to be taking some calls here because let's be real. We got babies. Jasmine has like 30 kids running around. <laughs> but I want I want to end. I had two questions, but I want to end um, with this one. How can how can a woman start becoming virtuous? Like, does she, can she do something? What I know we spoke about a lot of it here, but if you can put it in a condensed, concise way. How would you wrap this up in a bow for women to hear? Allie, do you want to go? For, who wants to go first? Security yeah, boss, I, can... I hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I, I'll, I'll be just, quick. If oh, a woman um, is interested in becoming a wife or 
making a change in her mindset. It's just not happy with herself. I would just first tell her to self-reflect and figure out what it is that she's lacking or where is she struggling? Um, because what you're talking about mostly would be something selfish. It would be a selfish mindset that everything is about her. You know, that's a big part of becoming whole too. You're not whole if you think that you're perfect and everything is about you. So <laughs> that would be self-reflection would be the, the, the thing that I would advise. Just, just do some self-reflection and getting a little closer to your creator and the um, reasoning that he, the reason that he has you here, your purpose for being here. So in the chat earlier asked a question and the question was, by what age should you stop being selfish? So that's how I'm pretty much going mm -hmm. to wrap this up. It's okay to be a selfish person if you lack awareness because you didn't know what you didn't know. But as soon as you start thinking and you're looking around, you're like, I'm not very considerate of others. You know, am I selfish? If you're asking the question, the answer is probably yes. But I think it takes time. I mean, I think you know, kids in general are selfish. Teenagers are selfish. I think that's that transition from being a teen into becoming an adult where you're like, okay, well, it's not just all about me anymore. And the second that you take accountability for being selfish, you're going to see that there's going to be a transformation because now you are responsible for the outcomes of your life in terms of when you only look out for number one and it doesn't work out well, you already know that about yourself before you had no clue that you were being self-absorbed after the fact that's going to be you know your L and it is important to take care of yourself and put yourself first. Don't get me wrong, but you know, you know, when you're being big headed, you're not thinking about anybody. If the, if your life is crashing around you and you're still getting those short delights that make you happy in the short term, but in the long term, your life's exploding, then yeah, you, you know, when you're being selfish and it's time to change and that's going to lead you into becoming a virtuous woman. It's a very humbling experience, but if you don't have that conversation with yourself, I mean, you're really putting yourself at risk of being single and childless and not by choice, but by, on purpose. Hmm. Yeah, I, you guys made great points. Accountability, self, learning how to be selfless and humility is huge. And then the other tangible things that you could do is surround yourself, like Ali said, with other virtuous women, because you are who you surround yourself with. Birds of a feather flock together. So it, it, it is going to naturally happen when you're around these type of people. It's going to help change your mindset. And you realize, OK, maybe I was wrong about this. Maybe I should do something different because you know, Stacy doesn't, um, she doesn't look at it the way that I do. Where am I going wrong? And self-reflection, it all circles back to self-reflection, but mm -hmm. surrounding yourselves with people and also dealing with those traumas that you may have in the past, because mm -hmm. when, when you take those traumas with you, you're always going to resort back to your old mindset. So mm -hmm. in order to change your mindset, you have to heal. You have to deal with those traumas or whatever it is that may cause you to think that you have to protect yourself at all means. And that inevitably turns into selfless selfishness. Sometimes mm -hmm. when you, you, you got this guard up and this hardness about yourself. So let's, let's try to tap into the softness that you were meant to be. You got to break those walls to get there. Mm -hmm. I, I 100% agree. Um, and I also, you know, for someone who, like myself, who became hard, right, because of feminism, I was this woman, I was soft, I was, you know, nurturing all of these things. And then life hits you and you're like, you have to make a choice, you know, and I know, like Ali said, when you're young, you're, you're selfish, that's, that's the nature, right? You're still figuring it out. But at some point, like you said, Jasmine, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, what is going on? Like, I've been operating like this for a long time. And this was my moment, you know, when, when people came up to me, love people I love, and they're like, you're a difficult person. <laughs> like, that was so hard for me to hear. Yeah. They're like, we, I don't want to be around you. You're just too difficult. You can't, I can't have a conversation with you. I can't, like we can't interact. You're always on the defensive. Like if, if these things keep popping up for you, it's time to make that change, you know? And if this conversation stirs that for you, then you're on the right track. 
I'm telling you because, you know, you got to tap into to these spaces. You got to tap into these conversations because it's really easy to get caught up with the world, what the world says, yeah. you know, going on these panels where like, ah, oh, she's a pick me. She's a pick Misha. She's this, this, not the, no, 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 no. Chill, 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 sis. Okay. You know, if you surround yourself around that, that's all you're going to get. You know, that's all you're going to be exposed to. And your heart is get, your heart is going to get harder and harder. And those walls are going to be tougher to break down. And to be honest, like, you know, when I, and I, I'm like red pill adjacent, but when I took that red pill for myself, it was a hard pill to swallow, right? Like it was a hard thing to swallow to be like, wow, okay, I've been living this way for a long time and this is not working. If I don't change, if I don't change for myself, because that's a good time to be, that's a good time to be a little self and you'd be like, if I don't change for myself, I'm going to be, this is going to be a hard road ahead, right? Mm -hmm. So that I could, so I could be in peace. So I could, cause that's something that I, that's something that I feel today. I don't struggle with the same problems that I did before. I don't carry the same weight anymore. Like, you know, all of the people talking and the noise and the chatter that all goes away. That all goes away. And it's a beautiful thing. And I, and I think that all of these women you know, probably feel the same exact way. I know I'm putting words in your mouth now, but I would, you know, the, the peace that you get and the, just the attitude, like, we're not like, nah, 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 nah. like just the, the way that we can have a conversation, right. Is completely different from what you see in the world. Yep. So that's my two cents on it. If anyone else has anything that they want to say, close it out for us. Um, but wait, hold on. Sorry. I'm so bad at this YouTube thing. We got two more super chats. <laughs> we got Celine says that, um, thank you for the 199. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit is a huge part in my opinion. And I agree. I totally agree. And Mrs. Cam, C-A-M. Thank you for the $5 donation. Women need to turn off love and hip hop and read the Bible, learn something real. God bless and keep glowing. Thank you so much. But yeah, does anyone, does anyone have anything they want to add? Yeah. Um, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to say, because a lot of people, um, a lot of women, they see this and they want to be a virtuous woman and they don't know where to start. And they just like, this is just light years away from what I am right now. Just understand we're all working progresses. Like no one's perfect. And like security boss said earlier, it takes time and development and wisdom. So don't expect so much from yourself to be perfect. Just know that when you when you recognize that you may be failing in a certain de department that's a good thing you actually recognize it mm -hmm. now let's pray about it let's do the work or whatever it is that you need to do to fix that but you know give yourself grace as well because in the world and society that we live in today we weren't we're, we're not being raised to be this we're not being taught to be this we're being actually um treated as if there's something wrong with us for being this so there's such a pushback that it is going to be harder than it would be for people what 20 years ago where it was the norm mm -hmm. so just give yourself grace and like i said the best bet is to surround yourself with other like-minded women i'm gonna piggyback off of family values because um the one thing that she said was you have to be willing even though you may mess up, but you have, once you're willing and you do mess up, then you have to just check that spirit and figure out where it's coming from. Again, that's going back to your creator and say, you know, why am I here? What I'm, what am I supposed to be doing? Where's this man? <laughs> How do I become this wife that you want me to be? Or this better as this woman you want me to be? So the willingness is what gets you here. The willingness is what makes you or gets you to being virtuous, I think. I 100% agree. So many gem drops, so many amazing things today. Like, 
I don't even know, y'all. You blow me. These conversations blow me away every single time that we have them. Like, can we learn anymore? Like, I hope y'all took as many notes as you possibly can, especially the ladies in the chat. I know there was a ton of women here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving us the super chats and having this dynamic conversations. Y'all tell us, we're going to end here. Tell us where we can find you and, you know, share, share that information. Where can we find you? What are you going to do for us? Cause we need to know. And Allie, can you speak about what's going on next week? All right. On your channel. Oh, oh yes. Yes. So Next week is going to be the third episode of Wife Life. This is a show that we're alternating between Rebecca and my platform. And you all are welcome to ask questions. You young ladies out there, we get it. There's not a whole lot of mentorship going on. But when we have these shows, you can type your questions in the chat. And as long as it's something that that we can answer to, we'll pull them up and we'll do that. You know, because I don't I don't think I can have these kind of conversations with other people in my life. I just don't know that many women that are focused on wifeliness. So we're happy to be the outlet for you guys. And we do have a very dynamic panel. There's a lot of different women that are rotating, coming from different cultures and different dynamics that they run in their household. So you'll really enjoy it. Men, you are also welcome to watch so that you can see what, you know, what the wives are like, right? Because a lot of the times y'all are unhappy with modern women and you're picking the wrong ones. My guy, you're picking the wrong ones. We exist. We're out here. Say it louder. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we exist. If you like this content, make sure you guys give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell. You can find me over on at Real Fem Sapien. That's my YouTube channel. I'm also on Instagram at the same name. And I just want to make it clear because I think femininity can be really intimidating for the newcomers. None of us on here are perfect. You do not mm -hmm. see the bad times in our marriages. You do not see the things that we have to repent about. Okay. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. We're only human. We're just like you. And I don't ever want you guys to think that we're these ethereal, mystical, perfect beings because it just wouldn't be true. And we'll talk about some of those challenges that we face as well as, as you know, the relationship develops and we get more comfortable with each other. So that's all mm -hmm. I got. Love it. Go ahead. And, um, you can find me at Family Value, or I'm sorry, you can find me at youtube.com slash Family Values TV. And actually, I'm glad Allie brought up um, the fact that we're not perfect, I have a series in mind of talking about my struggle with submission. Yes, I struggled with it in the beginning of my marriage. So we're going to I'm going to be talking about that. So make sure you go over there and follow. Go ahead. So, so I'm security boss. Just go to YouTube, put in security boss and I will be there. <laughs> Tomorrow <laughs> I have a show at 730. You got to hear this. It's our vexed women. I should say our vexed boss chicks, women, the new wives tomorrow at 730. We're going to talk about it. I want to know what y'all think. Yo, click the links in the description. And once this goes um, into the replay, I will have all the links down below for all the women. Um, and I will also have all the links from the other ladies that are not here today in the description so you guys can go check it out check them out go like subscribe and follow them on instagram tiktok the whole thing okay and we got two super chats because y'all come through all right y'all come through we got eugene Steele. thank you so much for the ten dollars every time and every time any woman content creator who is pro marriage or pro relationship gives give messages to women she also gives underlying but important messages to marriage minded men thank you yes that is the intent that is the goal and thank you so much dominic beasley for the 50 dollars thank you thank y'all like that's it that's what we got i appreciate it we appreciate you guys go ahead and um like on the way out. Okay. Subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I also have channel memberships if you guys are interested in that. And also next week we'll be on Allie's channel for Wife Life on Thursdays 
8 p.m. Eastern. If she changes it, she'll let you know. But thank you, 